Hey guys, it's been a while, and I figured I'd come back and answer another question, this one being from Necros Gur. Oh, and by the way, after I answer the question, I'm going to come around to a few other topics about just general channel update stuff and what's going on lately, just to check in on some stuff. But anyway, the question goes, first off, do you like the Elder Scrolls series? It doesn't really matter. It's not like I will stop watching if you don't. I'm just curious. Uh, basically, no, is actually what I'm going to say about Elder Scrolls. Like, I don't think they're bad games or anything like that. It's just they don't necessarily interest me. Here's what ha here's my story, so to speak, because it started off in a more positive place. Uh, basically, I had never heard of Elder Scrolls until Oblivion came out on the Xbox 360. Uh, I had it immediately because I'm like, oh, an RPG. I'm psyched. Because for me, playing Western RPGs on a console, like, basically my only frame of reference at that point was pretty much Bioware games. Like, I had... Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, I granted the second one's a different developer, of course, and I had Jade Empire, both of which I played on the original Xbox, so I'm like, these games are great! So I was still playing games in that genre, and I was a Diablo fan, and I had, like, cursory experience with the genre in general, I may, and, and when, I, when Oblivion came out, I'm like, look at this massive open fantasy world full of NPCs and look at and like I had the strategy guide and I'm like oh my god this NPC has his own daily schedule he wakes up at like six o'clock in the morning and he goes hunting and he comes back at eight and like everyone has a he takes vacation sometimes what like that kind of detail was incredible to me uh, so I, I lost so many hours to oblivion in fact I completed it as far as the Xbox 360 achievements go like I I think that involved you had I think you had to finish the story, uh, max out your rank in every single guild in the entire game, and then you had to complete the DLC, and you might have also had to do some miscellaneous quests here and there. But it was it was a serious time co commitment, and I was really into it. But then a lot of time passed because Dragon Age. Uh, there's a big gap between Oblivion coming out and Skyrim coming out, and. Uh, in the meantime, I played World of Warcraft, I played Mass Effect, I played Dragon Age, I played dozens of other things that I'm not going to immediately think of on top I played all these Fable games, uh, I, play, uh, I already said World of Warcraft, oh yeah, Dark Souls, of course, was a really big thing for me, it was I played Dark Souls, and here's, and that, that kind of changed how I played RPGs, because once upon a time, I would just mindlessly play RPGs, and it would, they were just a way to lose time. Like, I played Diablo 2 so much on PC. I would just do bail runs, and like do this over and over again to get loot. Do this over and over again to get levels. Try these different specs. Make 17 different characters. It's like, it w I, I was playing for a different reason. But nowadays, I'm not as interested in playing ga the game just for the sake of it. I'm not as interested in the random number generator. Instead, I have different things that draw me to RPGs these days, which are still my favorite genre. And they're kind of two des they're kind of two, two separate things, and I often get them from different sources, which is what still is kind of the truth. The truth. Uh, obviously, I've gotten really, really into playing Souls games uh, from from software, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls Two, and the upcoming Bloodborne, and it's not. I don't know, it's basically a Souls game, but might still, it might change the formula a little bit. We don't know entirely what the game's like yet till we first actually get our hands on it for sure. Uh, but those are games where you have intense combat, you have direct control of your character, and there's like really tactical stuff. Like the, co the controls aren't super complicated, but they're tight, and there's, spe there's specifics to how everything works, and it's really, it feels really skillful and interesting. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have the story element of... RPGs, which Dark Souls doesn't necessarily do as well. I know some people are obsessed with the lore and the backstories and the fan interpretations of stuff, but from 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 a flat out st storytelling perspective, I prefer something like Bioware's games. I love Mass Effect and Dragon Age and their character interactions and their development, they and all their different arcs and stuff. Like I'm having an absolute blast playing Inquisition all this time on the channel. Uh, so then Skyrim came out in 2011 around the time that Dark Souls t uh, came out. And so, like, I'm playing games where, like, I have intense... I have games that have intense combat that make me really interested, and games with storylines that make me re really interested, because by then, Mass Effect 1 and 2 were already out. I think 3 might have already been out, too, but there was two Dragon Age games also, and I just played so many games that where I cared about the story and so many games where I had cool combat experiences. And, unfortunately, Skyrim kind of didn't deliver on either for me. I, I've played Skyrim, 
I don't even know many. I may have played it as many as five, uh, six times now, and I don't mean playing through it. I mean like starting the game and saying, "All right, let's make a character and try to play and try to finally get hooked to this game." And every time, a few hours in, I'm like, "Huh, I'm gonna take a break," and then I don't come back for like three months because I don't have any desire to come back to that world. It's first of all, Cyrodiil in Oblivion was a beautiful, colorful admittedly dated now but is a, is a vibrant and nice place to be full of interesting creatures and Skyrim's full of snow and gray stuff and grayness and browns and grays and wolves and zombies and and giants and things that are just generally unpleasant so it's like this is a shitty place to be all right but i'm sure the inhabitants will make up for it and you talk to the inhabitants and like they're all creepy doll people that won't stop making horrifying eye contact with the camera and like the uh the direct uh look at look the the look directly at the camera thing that uh that that uh bethesda rpgs do is really unpleasant nowadays when because Graphics are getting better, but their characters are not better animated. They're not better voice acted. They're not better performed. They're creepy doll people with bad voice acting for the most part with, and like no acting. So when they look directly at the camera, it's mostly just an unpleasant experience. And I find myself not getting drawn into the story to the point where I often just don't know what's going on because it's just so hard to absorb information when it's just not interesting to me because I don't ca- I, I find myself not caring about any element of Skyrim in general. And that's not entirely new either, because even though I spent so much time playing uh, Oblivion, it might have just been, to some extent, I think it might have just been novelty. Like, look at this massive world. Look at all this cool stuff I can do. Like, I, I, all of this stuff was new. I'd never been able to do it before. It's like the definition of something that was, like, it was really cool at the time. Like, when you hear about a really great movie from the 80s or the 70s that was revolutionary, and you go back and watch it, like, people, kids going back now, Someone going back now and watching Star Wars for the first time in the 2010s, like, they can probably appreciate that it has a good story and that there's cool stuff happening and that it's a good movie. But it's not going to have that revolutionary feel of like, oh my god, this completely, ch- this is a game changer. It changed the world. Everything's different now. Star Wars. Blowing minds. Because you don't understand what's going on. So, like, and that happens to me all the time, not for Star Wars, but for other... Th- I grew up watching Star Wars, so I, it was new and revolutionary for me when I saw it, even though I'm much younger than the people who first saw it. But uh, I go back all the time and see stuff for the first time that pe- are supposed to be such a big deal, and I'm like, all right, that was cool, I guess. And to some extent, it's because so many things since then have already done, like, influential and big deal things. They Well, what happens is they influence things, and that means that other people are going to end up doing the same thing, so you get a lot of derivative stuff, but the derivative stuff's not bad necessarily, it's just derivative. And so what, what happens is when you get enough derivative works, it's hard to appreciate what makes the original special anymore at some point, unless you were there on Ground Zero, I suppose. But Skyrim is kind of an attempt to just capitalize on the popularity of Oblivion, and of course probably Morrowind before that, and just like, it, it's the it's a sequel. It's them doing... They, they're bound to do the things that the other game did before and then try to change a handful of things and improve a bit or something, or what they think is improving anyway. But it's an iteration. And unfortunately, Elder Scrolls is not revolutionary anymore. A big open world ever since... Like, GTA became popular. Like, GTA and Elder Scrolls were like the two things for a while, right? It was the big open world RPG and the big open world crime game that were kind of released in parallel and they take years and years to come out with a new seri- episode in the series and that was it. But now everyone's doing that. Ubisoft's entire business model is making massive open world games. So being a big open world isn't impressive to me anymore. And then, so that well, instead I've actually retreated away from open world games uh, to some extent. I still play them in my free time, like certain Ubisoft games I'll still play in my free time. I love Shadow of Mordor. An important thing for me is taking a, make a, make a game like Shadow of Mordor or Infamous Second Son where it's fun to explore everything because you can complete the map, so to speak, but, but it's actually fun the whole way through. Uh, GTA V and most Ubisoft games fail at this because there's so much stuff that... There's a lot of good stuff, but then there's also a lot of bad stuff because they just kept making stuff for the sake of making stuff and it just feels boring. And sometimes I get that feeling from uh, Elder Scrolls game. It's like, there's just, there's just more hills than there's more open fields and more rivers and more open and more land and more, more. But I don't, I'm like, what do I do? Like nothing, 
open world environments environments suffer from a lack of level design when that's always tragic to me because like you play through a dark souls game and or you play through a mass effect game and in, in, in many cases like as you go through the dungeons of whatever game uh there's specific encounter designs like here's a cliff that gives people a specific vantage point for shooting at you with their biotic powers in mass effect here's a level full of traps and dark souls and specific corners in certain locations that make it difficult for you to navigate but not in a bullshit way but an interesting way because you have to be really cautious about your surroundings and all this cool stuff you play most of the time i play an, an open world rpg like a like Oblivion and Skyrim, it's like, I'm in an open field and random stuff shows up here and there and we fight and then it's over. And I think most people probably figure Elder, Elder Scrolls combat's not super interesting. You just smack people with your sword a lot. Or if you have magic, you, you, it, you kind of plays like a, like a, like a kind of cute looking, like beautiful colors shooting everywhere. Cause I'm shooting fireballs and stuff. Uh, first person shooter to some extent. And same thing for with bows. Like that stuff's kind of neat. But the combat's, I don't, it never feels tactical and interesting. And my experience when I turned up the difficulty in Oblivion, like I was like fighting in the arena and I'm like, all right, let's try this in a hard mode. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now my enemies are impossible to kill and they're healing infinitely. I'm like, well, this is, the game didn't, doesn't feel different. It's just, you've made stats arbitrarily harder. And that's just, it's just not what I want in a game necessarily. So unfortunately, uh, I feel like there's games that do the co- the combat side better than than uh, Elder Scrolls games, and there's games that do the story better than Elder Scrolls games. So whenever I go to an Elder Scrolls game, I go into a big empty world where I can go do stuff, and none of it's really connected, and it's kind of like time, kind of like just burn burning up your time to some extent. The combat's not engaging, and all the people are creepy mannequin people that I don't really like being around. So it just kind of doesn't do anything for me. That said, and this this might sound controversial, not I almost said controversial. This might sound uh, like a contradiction, but I've actually been considering the idea of doing a Skyrim let's or or maybe even Oblivion uh, let's play at some point, just because I want to. I might give it a shot. It's, it's entirely possible I would just delete it and never air it. But but uh, if it may not those those games may not work for me on an individual level the way that they once did. But if I'm narrating and I'm doing the whole let's play commentary thing, it actually might be fun in that context because it kind of makes me emphasize things differently and process information differently. And if I'm filming it and talking and doing things, we might, I'm, it might like, it, like the whole point is to have open world adventure where you sort of create your own story. So having stuff happen in an episode in that kind of context that actually might make it more fun for me. The idea of the uh, the procedurally generated encounters. The uh, I'm trying to think of what what's called something storytelling when it's like it's a uh, incidental or something like that. So that I might still give it a shot in that context. I would love to get to play through Sky- Skyrim in some context that actually gets me interested in it because so far my attempts have failed. And I can I can respect still that there are these. They put a lot of work into it, and they're not these cynical, gross games, because we see so many games like Assassin's Creed Unity that are just cranked out to be products, and nothing's... It's kind of spiritless, and it's like you kind of look at it and wonder, like, what were they even trying to accomplish here? Like, what part of this was supposed to be a thing that was something one people wanted to play, aside from just checking off a list of, like, bigger environments, new moves, it looks just like Paris, and stuff like that. Uh, it's like it, it, it's stuff that you can put on the box rather than stuff that's just fun, and that's a bummer. And that's why I love about that's why I still respect about Skyrim is that uh, they're really they're, they're crafted games that put get a lot of work on them. It's just they don't they don't necessarily have the same goals in mind that I would want them to have. Maybe it's just not. It's it's like the ultimate case of possibly just not being for me. That said. I really, really like Fallout 3. In fact, it's enti- it's probably more likely that I'd play a Fallout game on this channel sooner because I actually, I, I really enjoy Fallout. And part of it might be that the uh, the VAT system lets me avoid how, awkward, how awkwardly Bethesda games tend to control because I don't feel like they control very well oftentimes. So it, it kind of, the idea of just entering a combat mode where combat just happens in a certain way is kind of neat. And then I can go back to storytelling and stuff, which... You know, post-apocalypse storyline. I feel like uh, 
like I love fantasy, but I think po- the post-apocalypse stories in many games have a higher success rate with me than fantasy ones. Just because fantasy is so trope heavy and so Tolkien based in many cases that it's just people trip over themselves on just doing like what's expected. Here's the orcs, here's the elves, here's the dwarves, and a lot of a lot of fantasy storylines just don't have enough imagination anymore. Which is not the case with Dragon Age Inquisition or Bioware. That's what I love about them in particular is that they... Like, Mass Effect is basically Star Wars. And Dragon Age is in many ways kind of like Lord of the Rings or many other fantasy storylines. But they don't... They're not generic. They're, they're Even if the overarching story like... Like, the, the overarching story of, Dark, of Dragon Age Origins with the Darkspawn, kind of generic. But all the touches they give it, all the characters, like, that's where the creativity comes through, and that's why it's really interesting. I'm mostly talking in circles right now. But anyway, uh, next part of the question is, also, I am very confused on what is going on with the real name thing, since in Lords of the Fallen, someone asked you, but I assumed it was Keith. It wasn't the first time I heard it mentioned, and now it, it is a good t- as time to any to ask. Uh, I don't care if it is, oh, just, yeah, it just keeps going a little bit, it doesn't matter. Uh, to clarify, my name is Keith. Like, that's, that's my real name. Uh, the channel name is Sebastian SB, which is mostly bullshit. Uh, basically, just like everyone else on the internet, I just had a username. And I've had this YouTube account since 2006, when I was a, about a decade younger now. Wow, it's 2015 now. Uh... <laughs> So I've had a YouTube account since near the creation of YouTube in the first place. I think I originally created it because I needed to verify my age in order to watch an ep- episode of Red vs. Blue on YouTube, I want to say. Something like that. And uh, so that that's it. I just made a channel. And I, I, it was Sebastian SB because in high school, I was taking German classes. And in German, we were all supposed to use German names. And that's just the one I picked from a book. Probably because of some mixture of like that one cartoon with the guy the page master maybe or maybe it was the never-ending story i don't know maybe it was the fucking little mermaid i don't really know why i picked sebastian I th- for some reason i liked that name and so i just went with that and sb is just some bullshit i added to the uh end of the name because obviously sebastian was taken uh this this username was originally created when i was it? I used to have a really shitty username on Xbox, on the Xbox Live. So when I got an Xbox 360, and I, I decided to just make a new account, and that's just the name I came up with when I was like 15 years old. So I'm just with it now. Because <laughs> that's just most, still my username on YouTube, and I've just stuck with it. So that's why when you look at my YouTube profile page, uh, Sebastian SB is what it says in the banner, but uh, the Google Plus integration shows just Keith as the username, and I'm fine with that. I like people just using my name and addressing me directly. That's it's kind of just less confusing to to not have to go under the guise of some weird sub name, even though some people still use one. And that's pretty much it for the question. So th- thanks for watching. There, I wanted to go on a, a few other topics though, particularly. Uh, and I guess this this may not be the best place to do it because people could have gotten bored and left by now because I was talking about the other stuff, but that's whatever. I'm just going to go for it. You may have noticed that I have enabled advertising on my channel, and that's because I I mean that was always the plan. I never I never made any promises to not advertise or anything. I just made the point cuz a previous question was like, "Is this your job?" and I was like, "Dude, you are you, are you are you serious? Is this my job? I don't have advertising. How how could this be my job? I'm not, I'm not making any money." Uh but that wasn't that. I never promised not to make money on it. Uh, so I, I enabled ads because I finally have a decent subscriber base and I'm getting decent viewership. And I'm like, all right, let's finally do it. I figured earlier on I had such just I would have such small such small viewership and so few subscribers that ads wouldn't really bring any money in. So it felt pointless to enable them at a smaller scale because I, I understand that advertising scares some people away. Some people won't be willing to watch, and that's unfortunate. And I, I didn't want to scare away potential new subscribers or new followers or fans because I had ads when they weren't going to make me money in return. But now we're getting closer to the point where the risk reward is better for me. Uh, and it's more under, it's more reasonable for me to want to make a little money, even if it does piss a couple of people off. And I'm sorry if that bothers you, but frankly, at some point, this is basically a job. Like, 
it's not a, it's not my job in the context of the question I asked answered before in a previous viewer question where I was like, is this how you make my, li is this how I make a living? No, yeah, I cannot make a living at this scale, but I can make some money in particular, in, in particular at the rate we're going right now, it's possible that I might be able to make enough money from the advertising on the channel to, to fund the channel basically. Cause let's playing frankly, especially if you do it on console, uh, it costs some money. You gotta have a decent microphone so that people just don't hate what they're hearing the whole time. My, my, my microphone costs money. I have the Hapage HP, HD PVR2 to record console games, which costs about $150. Uh, on, on, you know, just you have hardware that you need to record. And also, in order to grow, you need to play relevant games, which means you have to buy games when they're brand new at full price. So $60, $60 for Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, $25 for Grimrock 2, I want to say. $40 for Talos Principle. I'm, I'm bad at remembering the, the exact prices of those middle tier games that don't have exactly $15 or exactly $60 prices. But yeah, I've been buying a lot, all this, a lot of these games you've been watching me play. I've been buying them brand new. I bought uh, Dark Souls 2 brand new to play for the channel, and then I bought Dark Souls 2 again a month later on PC, brand new, so I could play that version on the on the channel for other reasons, particularly for the DL, for D, uh, DLC reasons would be nice because I knew the DLC was going to come out sooner on on PC by a day, or in the case of the third DLC, like a few days later, a few days early, I got to play it totally early, and that really helped actually. So it would be great if ads could say pay for the games that I play on the channel. That'd be great. If the channel became self-funded, that'd be a good starting point. And yeah, pe people keep saying they want me to, they want me to do well. Well, yeah, it, it would, I would love to be able to make a living on this. If I could actually, if I made enough money from this to get my own place, then the channel itself would improve in quality because I could record, I would have way more, uh, I would have way less, less constrained uh, recording schedule where I could actually I could keep up with everything so that all these different shows wouldn't keep flickering in and out and being inconsistent and I keep having shows come up at weird times or here's four episodes of the show and that's off for three days and now it's back like this this type of chaos happens because I have like a limited bandwidth in which to record but and that's not an internet thing I'm just saying like here's a three hour gap where no one's gonna bother me and no one's also sleeping because I have to deal with the fact that I live with other people and those people may do stuff at different times of day. They might make noise, they might interrupt me, or might be expected to all like do stuff together and I can't go off to let's play in the corner or anything. There's also moments where just people go to sleep. I have to work at multiple two people's uh, schedules. So you have to deal with the fact that uh, I can't make noise sometimes a day and that's just a thing. So if I could it, like if I could somehow like get my own place for the purposes of, of let's playing then I'd be better off and that would work out but I'm utterly rambling off in a weird direction at this point. But anyway, I enabled ads more than anything because I feel like I've earned it because if you watch this channel, you've seen you know how many minutes come a video come out per day on this channel. Like it's like a full-time it's like a it's like a movie, right? <laughs> like Dragon Age Inquisition, what? 40 to 50 minutes a day? Uh then two, there's usually two other episodes every day, and those other episodes are between 20 and 30 minutes long, maybe even as long as 40 in a few cases. So that's anywhere between 90 minutes and two hours of video per day. And every recording session takes longer to record than it does to watch. Uh, if I'm really lucky, something like Gravity Ghost will only take about as long to record as it does to watch because I start recording, uh, I do the episode, like I just sync the audio real quick. I start recording the episode. I stop the episode. The end. It's done. If I'm real lucky, that happens. That never happens to anything besides uh, Gravity Ghost, though. Uh, Dying Light has editing where I have to cut around. You know, like you you guys watch this channel. You've seen the jump cuts. So think about think about every time you watch Dragon Age Inquisition. There's a 50 minute episode, and there's like three or four jump cuts. Maybe who knows how many. Those, any one of those jump cuts could be th it could be a one minute long jump cut where I just ran across a, a field a little bit and something new happened or I could, it could be eight minutes of inventory management I have had 90 minute recordings of Dragon Age Inquisition turn into 40 minute episodes before where so much stuff was stuff that needed to be cut out to make it an episode so there it can literally be like a one like a one to two 
or a two to one ratio where it takes twice. I, like I record for two hours to get one hours of one hour of video. Like that happens sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, Talos principle. All those times I cut to like, oh, I'm stuck on this puzzle for a while. Let's let's wait a minute. Or Grimrock also had that situation where. I would cut while I'm moving around and man- invent- managing inventory or I'm stuck on a puzzle for a little bit and I'm going to think it through for a while, like all this stuff. Uh, so just, I already have a, what I would say is a fairly impressive amount of video per day. And it's actually <laughs> like the actual amount of time that goes into each episode is actually longer than that. And that's just the recording perspective. Imagine editing that video. Yeah. Because I have to edit every video, and I do edit every video. Uh, at the very least, even Gravity Ghost, which takes the least editing because it doesn't really have jump cuts, I still have to change the audio levels whenever someone talks because I have to keep the game quiet when I'm talking, or you can't understand what I'm saying. But then I have to. But then I. I, I and not everyone does this, but I make a point to make it so that uh, my microphone is muted, so you don't get any background noise, and the game uh, volume is much louder whenever dialogue is happening in various games. That, has to, that happens in Dying Light, that happens in Mind, Path of, Th- Path of Thalamus, that happens in, uh, I, get, it kind of, I guess it doesn't happen in Legend of Grimrock, but in Legend of Grimrock had tons of jump cuts. It happens in Talos Principle, it happens in Dragon Age Inquisition about every four minutes. Uh, every time someone talks in Dragon Age Inquisition and you notice that you can clearly hear what they're saying, that's because I had to manually edit that every single time. And it's a time commitment. Then I have to render the video. Rendering a video takes about as long as the video's duration or more. Sometimes as as long as twice as much longer. Uh, Some games, especially when I'm recording on PC and it's really high detail video in many cases, it takes, it can take twice as long to render as it does to watch. So like a 30 minute video can take an hour to render or more. And that's crazy. And then on top of that, I have to upload the video. And I don't have great internet, so that can take an eternity. If I'm lucky, I can uh, upload and schedule a bunch of stuff overnight. But as you can imagine, <laughs> looking at this, uh, a lot of this is essentially a full-time job. So, uh, and lately I've been really busy because I've essentially been working a real full-time job, which has made it much harder because, uh, like I mentioned before, I'm kind of, I'm basically unemployed, but I work at my dad's shop. And we've had a really big project lately where I'm basically a full-time employee right now because of how big of the project it is. But uh, if I get a real job, like in my geology in my geology field, uh, that's going to be a time commitment. And it might be, I might have to cut down my, imp- my output on this channel because it, it takes so much time and because I care about putting out quality videos. And so, yeah, if I somehow made money on this channel, then... <laughs> the things would improve because I could focus on this and I could have my privacy and stuff like that. But I just want, I just hope that you guys, before you get mad at me for enabling ads, you can understand just how much time goes into some of the stuff because it is, it's no joke as much. And and you can say like, Oh, you're just doing computer stuff and playing video games. And that's true, but it's still work. And it's not, I I won't call it hard work, but it's time consuming work. And I, I hope that people can respect that to some extent because people like to look down on content creators on YouTube sometimes is just something that's like, they, they think it's easier than it is, which is like the motto of our, the Reddit, the subreddit for Let's Plays is everyone thinks they can hop into uh, Let's Plays because all they see is famous people and people making a living out doing it. And then you see how hard it is and how time consuming it is and they all quit because they can't take it. I'm one of those people who hasn't quit because I'm totally into it. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's... That's my rambling topic because I deviate everywhere and get confused about what I'm trying to talk about anyway. But hope you guys followed all that. And uh, one last thing I wanted to touch on is that uh, someone impersonated me. And that's not cool. Uh, As you may know, you've probably heard about this from various people, be it game reviewers or various Let's Player publications, is that it's possible to sometimes get press copies of games provided to you. Uh, Gravity Ghost was given to me for free and Dying Light was given to me for free. And that's because people saw my channel and I, I had signed up for certain things and people and I qualified for getting a copy. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Thanks. I wasn't required to do anything in return for any of these cases, which is nice. So I'm not, no one's saying, telling me to not say certain things or anything like that. Uh, so it's, it's not, there's no conflict of interest as far as I know here. But uh, someone 
was making fake email addresses and contacting people on my behalf. And that is amazingly uncool. I'm a, de- I'm a developing channel and I'm trying, to pu- I'm trying to put work in here and someone's trying to use my work to get free stuff for themselves and that's kind of gross. Aside from just the fact that you're conning people, uh, these people might contact me and be like, hey, we gave you a free copy of this thing. Why aren't you doing anything with it? Like, that's not how this deal is supposed to work. And I'll be like, I've never talked to you before. What are you talking about? And that's not cool because that that could hurt my reputation. People could not want to deal with me because they think that I'm like getting press copies of games and doing nothing with them or something, which is not the case. Uh... And that's really like if you're if you're watching this and you're the one who's impersonating me, please stop. That's not that's not at all acceptable to pretend to be someone else for your own gain. That's gross. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Like always, uh, I know that's a kind of a dark moment there, uh, to, to kind of a, not a positive last thought. But I don't have much more to say at this point. Uh, one up, one out. Uh, this comment, I'm sorry, I'm so f- I'm so far behind on this stuff. This comment was made on my original, I think it was made on my original video of like, hey, I got a thousand subs. You want to ask questions, I guess? Go for it. So I'm just now getting to that. My bad. Uh, Might have been the first one too, but there was more compelling questions at first of like someone being like, I want to get into Let's Playing. And I'm like, oh God, I have to warn you. <laughs> but I'm, at to, I'm up to 1700 subscribers. Um, uh so I've gotten like a 70% growth since I originally made that video where I said I got a thousand viewers and that's crazy. That's blowing my mind. And I think I owe it by and large to Talos Principle, Legend of Grimrock and Dragon Age Inquisition to the point where like for the longest time, I think I thought my whole audience was here for Dark Souls. But at this point, uh, arguably a larger number of people are probably here for other games. Although that certainly won't stop me from playing more Dark Souls in the future. Don't worry about that. But I'm just, I'm really psyched about the growth rate of this channel. This is blowing away my expectations completely. I, I'll be, I wouldn't be surprised if this time next year I catch up with Sad Games, which is my other channel, which is noticeably larger, but also notab- noticeably older. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate the sport, and I'll see you guys next time. Feel free to leave a, kind of, uh, if you've made it to this 30-minute video, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the, in, in the description, uh, I almost said in the description. I don't know why I keep saying that. I've, I think I've made that mistake multiple times now. Be f- feel free to leave a comment you have, if you have any questions, and I'll, I may answer them in a future video, just like how I did here for Necros Gur, and I've done for multiple people's, m- multiple people in other videos. So, thanks for watching, like always, guys. I, I've already said that. And stop. No. See, this is why I said don't walk too much. <laughs> it's really unpleasant, right? This just feels like it takes too long. And she so like you're... unzips her pants? <laughs> <laughs>